I'm going to show you, hopefully, as the Holy Spirit enables me to do so, because everything good and perfect is from the Holy Spirit. We give him the glory. How to interpret this prophecy and how not to interpret it. But before we do that, <clears throat> the comparison he gave ignores what Deuteronomy itself says a prophet like Moses will be like. So you don't need to guess what the criteria <clears throat> that the Bible gives for a prophet to be like Moses. It's in the scriptures themselves. Now, as the Holy Spirit enables me to recall the scriptures and all the facts perfectly and destroy all attacks on my mind so I don't forget, make sure you have this article open as you follow along. Here it is. This is it. Jesus, the prophet like Moses. So let's first of all, Hammer, how Muhammad is not like Moses, in that the prophet like Moses must have the same view of God that Moses did and cannot contradict what Moses taught about God and God's relationship to his people. Let me repeat. Let me repeat. The prophet like Moses must have the same view of God that Moses did and cannot contradict what Moses taught about the way God relates to his people. Are you with me there? And we're going to have fun, especially when it comes to how to interpret this prophecy and how Jesus fulfills it. But let me let the cat out of the bag. The prophecy of Deuteronomy 18 is not about Jesus per se. Let me repeat. I've seen Christians, and I've been guilty of this in the past, and this is why we grow and learn. The Holy Spirit sanctifies us and changes us and transforms us to know the scriptures with greater depth and accuracy. The prophecy itself is not about Jesus per se, though Jesus does fulfill the prophecy. The prophecy refers to the prophetic office, an office of prophethood that will be fulfilled by many people, starting with Moses' successor, Joshua. What do I mean? When we read the contextual meaning of the prophecy, the prophecy is God promising Israel that he will not leave them without a spokesperson who will speak on behalf of God to his covenant people because when God showed up in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, when the cloud descended on Mount Horeb, Mount Sinai, and the people heard God's voice audibly, and I'm going to show this to you. I'm just giving you a really quick summation of why this prophecy was given. Okay, real quickly, in Exodus 19, Exodus 20, when God showed up and they heard God's voice audibly, the Israelites were stricken with fear and terror, hearing the voice of God. And in Exodus 20, 18 to 23, pay attention, guys, class has begun. Exodus 20, verses 18 to 23, they told Moses, let us not hear this voice anymore, lest we die. You speak to us. They didn't see God's visible shape, visible form like Moses did. When Moses entered the cloud, he was allowed to see the similitude, the form that God assumed. God assumed a visible form, a visible shape by which Moses could behold God and see his glory visibly and speak to God directly face to face, mouth to mouth when he entered the cloud for 40 days and 40 nights. But God did not allow the nation to see that form, that shape. They saw a pillar of cloud. They saw a pillar of fire, but they didn't see God's form that was in the cloud by day, in the fire by night. But they heard God's voice audibly. They heard God's voice loudly. And from the power of the voice, they were stricken with fear and they couldn't handle hearing God's voice audibly. And they begged Moses, you speak to us. We don't need to hear from God. You speak to us. So what did God say? I'll honor that request. Since you don't want me to appear and speak to you audibly from heaven, where you hear my voice audibly, because the majesty, the glory, and the power and magnificence of God's voice was too much for them to handle, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to now send prophets to speak to you on my behalf like Moses did. That's what Deuteronomy 18 is all about. <clears throat> Are you with me there? And I'll prove it to you. So, number one, 
We Christians need to be careful not reading too much into the prophecy. In its context, it's not a prophecy about Jesus only. It is a promise that God will send prophets after Moses' death, who, like Moses, will be God's mouthpiece, speaking to the people on God's behalf, because the people didn't want God to speak to them directly, because his voice was too majestic, too glorious, too magnificent for them to handle. So they wanted a human being like them, a human spokesperson, who would then speak to them on God's behalf. And God says, okay, I'll do it. After Moses is, dies, I will send a prophet like Moses to speak to you on my behalf. And the first prophet in line was Joshua. Up until Moses died, there was no prophet like Moses. But then when Moses dies, and then you read in the book of Joshua, Joshua now becomes the prophet like Moses, who does miracles like Moses, such as the splitting of the Jordan River. If you read the book of Joshua, by his command, the sun stood still for a whole day. It did not set. And God honored him by splitting the Jordan River so they could cross through the Jordan River and enter the promised land, similarly to the way God split the Red Sea. That's all in the book of Joshua. And so... Prophet after prophet after prophet after prophet came, culminating with Jesus, who then was the last prophet in line of all the prophets like Moses. So we're going to go into a lot of meat.